Workplace gas explosion injures one. Milwaukee woman injured in rollover crash near Oostburg. Charges filed after 15-month-old test, test positive for marijuana. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie and welcome to Community News Review for Monday, October 1st, 2018. A pizza delivery driver helped the Sheriff County Sheboygan's apartment rescue a woman who had been kidnapped and was being held at home in Waldo. It was Thursday afternoon when the delivery driver arrived at the home and was met at the door by a middle-aged couple and the woman had a black eye. While the man was paying for the pizza, the woman mouthed to the driver, help me, and call the police. Deputies arrived and heard the woman yelling, help me, and please come in. Court documents say Dean Hoffman walked into the woman's house around one that afternoon, punched the woman, tied her up with a power cord, trying to convince her to get back into a relationship with him. Hoffman is facing two felonies and more than 50 years in prison if he is convicted. A plea hearing is scheduled for Monday for the man charged after his car wound up in the Pigeon River near Sheboygan Falls in March. Police say Andrew Christian was driving the Ford Focus south on Range Line Road near Shamrock Road early that morning, and court documents say he was speeding, failed to negotiate a curve, hit some trees, and ended up in Pigeon River. Tyler Letcher was in the car with him and was airlifted to Theta Care in Nina to be treated for serious injuries. Deputies say Christian had alcohol in his system and tried walking away after the crash. He is facing over 20 years in prison if he is found guilty. A Milwaukee woman was seriously injured in a rollover accident on I-43 Friday morning. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says it happened around 8.25 when a tire blew on a vehicle heading northbound near DeWitt Road in the town of Holland. That caused the driver to lose control and the car left the highway, rolled and hit a tree. The 49-year-old woman driving the car was taken to Memorial Hospital in Sheboygan to be treated for the suspected serious injuries. A former nurse in Meritor's neonatal intensive care unit has been charged with 19 felonies related to child abuse. 43-year-old Christopher Kafem made an initial appearance Thursday in Dane County Court. Dane County DA Ishmael Ozana says Kafem's motive is still not clear. I can't say why this may have happened, but when it came to light, we looked at it and we were moving forward. The abuse allegedly goes back to April of 2017. An investigation began earlier in the year after several babies were found to have injuries from bruising to a broken arm and a fractured skull. Coffin was suspected from Meritor in February when authorities first suspected his involvement with patient injuries. One person was injured when a propane tank exploded Friday afternoon in Wausau. The incident happened around 2 p.m. at the Lakes Gas Company in Nearing Street. The building was fully engulfed and collapsed according to Wausau Fire Department spokesman. The injured man had been painting the tank when gas leaked out of the tank and exploded. No one else was in the building at that time, and the injured worker was taken to the hospital. No update on his condition was yet available. A Sheboygan Falls woman is facing child neglect and drug charges after a 15-month-old tested positive for drugs. 
Brianna Anderson was arrested after the child arrived at Memorial Hospital last Monday, lethargic, crying, and not acting normal. The child's mother told police that she lives with Anderson and that she and Anderson use marijuana together. A nurse at the hospital said that she believed the child likely ate marijuana that was picked up off of the floor. Investigators searched their apartment and found drug paraphernalia and marijuana. Anderson is facing up to six years in prison if she is found guilty. An 18-year-old Sheboygan man is facing a felony sex assault charge for having sex with a 14-year-old girl. Colin Smith was charged in Sheboygan County Court after the teen overdosed on ibuprofen and ended up in the hospital. Court documents say she told an officer that she was upset about an incident that happened in high school, but then told the officer about the sexual relationship with Smith. She said that the two began dating September 19th and they had sex two days later. When the officer had talked to Smith, he admitted to the sexual contact and said he knew that the girl was 14. He could spend 40 years in prison if he is found guilty. A UW-Milwaukee student is facing criminal charges after he allegedly threatened a man and then threatened an officer via a dating app. Campus police arrested Preston Ellis Frieda and they said he threatened a man who he met through Grindr after the two got into a dispute about whether they'd exchange pictures before meeting for sex. Police say Ellison also threatened the investigating officer when he saw when he saw them taking, talking to the police. Security cameras show Frida outside of the residence hall sending messages via his phone. One message sent to his would-be victim during the police interview said, I'll still shoot those pigs too. He is charged with making a threat against a law enforcement officer. If convicted, he could face up to six years in prison and a $10,000 fine. And finally, if you are still looking to get tickets to the Brewers postseason, make sure you are not about to get scammed. State Consumer Protection Director Michelle Reinen says the Brewers have a designated ticket resale point at the stadium on game day. If you are sitting in the parking lot trying to find a way to get in, use that as your means of recognizing if you're dealing with a legitimate reseller or not. You can also find tickets online with StubHub or other authorized dealers. We really encourage consumers to use their credit cards rather than cash, checks, debit cards, or wire transfers. Those are all big indicators that there could be trouble and that you will have no protection. Ryan remains, reminds people that individual game tickets are only being distributed via the official MLB phone app. No physical copies are being issued. Remember that they have their ballpark app and that you can use on your smartphone and that is how the digital ticket will be received. Be skeptical of the too-good-to-be-true offers, sellers offering ticket printouts or photocopies, and requesting to pay a wire transfer or prepaid debit card. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next time for another recap of our local news. From all of us at Community News Review, have a great day. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.